Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and let's get started on our package versus nuke challenge. We've got our packages first, and that's typically when you get your bees from somebody, you're going to experience this. You're going to have your packages available first, and then your nukes later. That's not always the case, but most areas it is. So we've got our three packages. We're going to have our two nukes in about 10 days or so. We're starting them out on solid bottom boards. The reason for that is, is I, the screens that I got, they still need painted, and I really don't want to just paint them today and then put these bees on top because all of that smell is going to probably want to drive them out of the hive, and they're not locked in. So we're going to use some of our old junk bottom boards and get them settled in, and then probably in our next video we'll already have our screen bottom boards. And that way when we do our treatments and to show you how many mites are in these packages, we'll have an insert and you'll get to see all that stuff. So. When it comes to this challenge, like I said in one of the other videos, we are not going to take from the other like 60 or 70 colonies we have in this yard and bring it over here. These five colonies, the two nukes and the three packages will be able to inter uh, mingle with one another. We're gonna be able to exchange frames, but everything else, you know, it's off limits. If anything, it's gonna handicap these uh, bees having all those other colonies here because it's gonna be more foragers out there and there's not going to be as much for these to go after so if anything it's going to make it a little bit more interesting to see how they turn out so let's go ahead and get these installed this is these are three pound packages from will banks out of georgia you can see let me grab this one over you know, they're all over the place but there is a, a nominal amount of bees in here and dead bees and all kinds of stuff you know, there's, there's a few. You can't really see it because the bees are moving so much, but there's probably around 500 dead bees in here, and that's very common. Now, if you're starting to see half an inch of dead bees in the bottom or more, then there's something going on. It's, it's a problem, especially if you get them shipped in and they have half an inch or more bees, I would call and say, hey, and take a picture, obviously, when you get these things shipped in. Of course, when we pull the queen out, always make sure the queen's okay. But these three pounds of bees, there's, there's going to be some older bees in there. And that's one thing that new beekeepers don't often understand is that bees expire pretty often. I mean, I'm probably losing 10,000, 20,000 bees a day just in this bee yard alone. Just old bees that just die all the time and the new ones being born all the time, just the way it works. Alrighty. So this right here, this top flange, I already got the other ones off because I thought it'd save us a little bit of time. Let's get this on the ground. Okie doke. Now we got our queens right here. Most of them have it like this with the metal on top. Some of them are a little bit different. You got your feeder can right here in the middle. And we're going to show you how we get them out. We also have entrance reducers in the front where the bees can't get in and out super quickly. And also it protects from robbers if that's an issue. These little uh, patties that you see is actually a queen candy recipe, but since we're using frame feeders, we're gonna be using those and just until they get settled in. And this is maybe the most important thing that I will say in this video, is I love frame feeders. However, if you use them at this moment, you are going to kill bees because these bees, once again, are not locked in. These queens came from a different section of Will Banks' yard, and th these bees right here came from somewhere else. So. We're mixing them together. Not all of those bees are locked in on this queen. She's not laying. They'll smell this one. They'll smell this one next door. They'll be going all through the air, freaking out. They'll be running through the hive, freaking out. And if you have this, you can end up drowning several hundred to a thousand or so bees using a frame feeder. And it's not because bees can't go into a frame feeder and use it correctly. It's just in a situation like this, it is a problem so don't use frame feeders right off the bat now you might get away with it sometimes but it's just better to be safe than sorry most of the beekeepers that i know that say they hate frame feeders it was usually because they hived a package with a frame feeder and drowned a bunch of bees and they tossed the frame feeder you know how i know that's because you know 16 years ago i did the same thing ah learning curves all right so we've got four foundation frames we've got a comb frame and if you don't have comb that's fine just to throw another foundation in there and there's a couple different ways to install these I'm going to kind of go through one of the ones we're not going to do 
just explain it to you, and I'm going to show you how we do it. Just have it just like this. In a couple of days, we'll be coming back in. And we're going to be showing you everything that we do to these things. Everything. So there's going to be a lot of short videos. This is probably going to be the longest one. And we're going to stick that package right in there. But this Queen Candy, we're going to have a video on how to make it. Super easy. And it is absolutely delicious if you're a bee. If you're a human, goodness gracious, you make you go diabetic. All right. So you'll think this is rough, but it's just part of it. We're going to shake the bees down so we can get this out without crushing a lot of bees as we're pulling it out, all right? And that's where you might want to save this little piece right here. Just flip that over. All right. Now this we're going to save this. Don't throw this away. There's a lot of good feed still in here. Just have the, the side that has the three holes. They put three little pinholes to feed your bees. When you have your bees and you bring them back, stick them in a cool place. Don't let them get hot when you're storing them. And get a spray bottle with one to one and just spritz them a little bit here and there because this will feed them. But it's really hard for just three little holes to feed like 10,000 odd bees. So just a, a little spritz, maybe twice a day, just a little bit to help out until you're ready to install them. It's best if you install these things, you know, as soon as possible. But if the weather is a little uh, a crazy, then they can wait a, a day or two. But the longer you wait, the more dead bees you're going to have in the bottom. That's just all there is to it. So set this to the side with the holes facing up. Now, we are going to stick that package right over here. Let me grab the lid. Before we stick that in, we are going to take this queen... All right, and there she is down in there. You probably can't see her good. There's several attendants in there, but she's down in there. You can get them with a March Queen, and she'll be tiny looking, and that's because she has not been laying. She'll swell up quite a bit in the next few days, but this is one of the reasons why the bees aren't locked in. This That's one of the differences with a nuke. When you get a nuke, they're already locked in. They're, they're, they're ready to go. You can throw a frame feeder in right away and fill that sucker up. It's very different mindset because not all these bees are locked on this queen so now we're going to take this queen we're going to stick it with the smooth side facing the comb that way they can get around and cluster around that queen with the foundation and we're going to need to come back and get on this pretty quickly because as we're feeding they're going to start drawing this foundation out and if we have that big gap here we violated bee space and they're going to draw some weird stuff down in there which is going to make life very fun for you and the bees that you're trying to pull up funky looking frames. All right, so now what we're going to do is just stick this down in here. Now, keep in mind, let's get this frame feeder out. We don't really need that in right now anyways. We'll just do that. Keep in mind that if you're in a really cold region and you're, or you're just getting some really cold weather, and it's like freezing outside, you can install them in really cold weather, but this method is not going to work. We know that it's not going to get too awful cool tonight. And we are going to check tonight and make sure that they've come out of this package and gone to this queen. And my method that I like to do is just do this, pull the top off, let them slowly work their way over instead of just frantically shaking them out, which is what a lot of people will show you how to do. So. They're just going to go over there and find that queen and get around her. Get off the candy. Alright. So that's one done. We're going to come back later and make sure that those bees have come out of that package and clustered around that queen. Sometimes they won't. Most of the time when they don't, it's because it's, it's too cool for them to run around or because they have a queen of the package and sometimes the commercial beekeepers will accidentally shake a, uh, a queen in here and then they'll have one up here and of course they're not accepting this one in here they're going to accept the one that's in here so this they might isolate that one alone um, all by yourself and they won't they won't try to do anything you know what i oftentimes just come and hand release the queens later but that's not a good idea for um, people that don't know how to catch queens go with their hands so 
this is what I recommend you do. Just take off this metal flap. And you got candy in there. It's pretty much the same queen candy that we have right here. And as they slowly eat through that, they're going to accept the queen. Now, one thing to keep in mind, don't have it facing down because they're fairly often will be like a dead worker bead in here. And if you have it facing down, that thing can fall in and plug the hole and then they can't get her out, even if they eat through the candy. So let's uh, try this again. All right, there's that right there. And see how they're not just running around and all that jazz? Get off that candy. Try not to pressure me if we can help it. All right. Now, I'm going to do one of these the good old-fashioned way here in a second. We'll save that one for last. All right, so again, pop, that out, pull this out. Oh. And see, they're a little more frantic. And it's interesting, some packages will be a lot more than others. Get this frame feeder out of here. Queen looks really good. <laughs> My wife didn't have her bell on. Right, pop this again. Throw that in there. Grab a lid. I should have had this already over here. that away. Boy. All right. Oh yeah, I pulled this comb out. Look. No, there's mold. They'll figure it out. Alrighty then, so we're going to do this one a little bit more fun-like. And usually you keep the uh, other frames in for this one. Now, one other thing, don't put your uh, other supers on. Some people like to throw extra boxes on and shake them in, but if you leave headspace up here, especially if you have foundation, if you have combs, it's a little bit better. A lot of times you want to stay on the comb, but if you have foundation, you leave headroom up here. They're going to want to go up there and just start building their own stuff. I mean, that's what bees do best. They don't need your frames to, to do it in. So I like to keep it in a, a single box. Now, again, if you're doing this up in really cold areas, then you need to look into the cold uh, package installs. I'm not experienced in that area of uh, beekeeping, and I'm sure there's several good videos out there. Now, so if we're doing it the old-fashioned way, and by the way, when my wife got into beekeeping, guy that showed her at her local club got her stung like 20 times doing it this way. Sometimes you have to and like I said if I come back tonight and those packages aren't all the way out you got to shake them back in you got to make sure they're covering that queen or they'll get cold. And uh, the queen will get cold and then if you're out of a queen you're in trouble. See how these bees are not locked in? They're not acting like a hive. They're just freaking out. All right, now for the classic package install. Boy, I hate doing it this way. Let me grab the lid real quick. And I'm sure there's a few things that I have missed. Pointers, tips, all that jazz. We are not the world's uh, experts in uh, package installation because we really prefer making splits and nukes because they are not crazy like this. Fun times. Man, you gotta watch that screen, it'll cut you. 
break that clean. They're just running all over the place. Come over and over here and look at it. Cut myself that screen. That's why you wear gloves. It's just so disorganized. See, if you had a frame feeder in there with full of, full of syrup, they drown themselves, not because they can't crawl out as an individual, but because when you have three or four layers of bees on top of each other, the ones on the bottom get drowned. All right, now they've kind of moved around a little bit, so I can move this over without crushing bees on the bottom. In cold weather, it'd probably be best to do it like this so you get the bees out moving around a little bit more. Now, you don't have to have a patty like this. A lot of people are going to use a entrance feeder, which works fine. Some people, if, if you're in cold, if you're getting a cold, cold night 20s and you know low 30s and stuff like that, then you need to have food contact. And why? that's why this is so important. You'd be surprised how quickly bees can starve. They can starve very quickly, and they need that energy source to get warm. There's just no other way around it. So don't let them go without feed. See if we can scoot these bees off here. Your bees can easily starve in a day. Bees require a lot of energy to eat the cluster. All right. And you can kind of see why I like doing the other method. I might end up still having to come back and shake those packages out. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you have any comments or questions or anything that you think that I might have missed or a different method, feel free to ask below. I can't really think of anything else. Again, we're going to have the nukes over there. We're going to show you the follow-ups on everything that goes on when we put the frame feeders back in as we feed. All of that stuff. We're going to probably put a little bit of pollen patties mix in there before too long. Oh, and since we didn't get quite all the bees out of this because it is really hard to do so, we're going to kind of stick that up here towards the front. And as they fly out, they'll eventually work their way over this direction now. Here is one reason I don't like packages. These bees are not locked in. Let's say this queen over here made it better, whatever. These two, all their bees that are flying around, they could very well drift over to this one because this queen smells better to them than the queen that they came with. And uh, so there's that issue. One of the other issues um, that you'll have with packages is the fact that the queens sometimes don't get mated as well as in nucleus colonies. But then again, with nukes, I know of so many people that sell hundreds and thousands of nukes and people think, oh, local raised nukes, all that jazz. Well, a lot of those guys, and some of them are fairly big names, they're purchasing commercial queens, splitting their bees and putting a commercial queen in there. So you're getting the same genetics because a lot of those guys don't raise their own stock. Now you're, you're gonna see not only a difference in our nucleus colonies over these, but you're gonna see a different color of bee. Our nukes are, have a, a darker bee than this. These are Italians, by the way. And it doesn't really matter to me about the genetics as far as is it Italian, is it Carnies, Carnolian, whatever, Russian. Good bees are good bees. I don't care what you call them. If they perform well, they're gentle, they make lots of honey, they don't run all over the frames, they don't have signs of uh, chalk brood or diseases, and if they show some resistance to the mites and viruses, that's even better. Anyways, we've covered a lot. There's a lot I'm sure that I missed. Leave any questions below, suggestions below, and if you liked our video, please share it to other people let them know we're going to have just everything that we possibly can think of on keeping these these bees not only successfully at five but splitting them later in the year to make them sustainable insurance policy colonies and if they all come through lots of honey which equals money thanks for watching our video and if you haven't subscribe and share